Hello, I'm Robert Britton, instructor in animal science here at College of the Sequoias. The crux of making this film uh, for you is to encourage safe animal handling practices, both for the person that's going to do the handling and low stress handling with a limitation on possible injuries to everybody that's involved. During the course of, of our shooting, I hope to cover these subjects with you. Number one, we'll go through differentiation by species, how different is it handling beef cattle to dairy cattle, sheep, hogs, horse, and how each one of those species has some unique features about what is acceptable with them and is commonly done in the industry. We also make reference to gender variations in that as far as handling males as compared to handling females and then animals that have been neutered, bulls that have become steers, rams that have become weathers, and so on. The conditions in which you're going to have to handle them, how does that differentiate? When you talk about breeding cattle during the breeding season, dealing with bulls, dealing with cows, boars, sows, whatever it may be, and how things are going to change, and how during the time of the season, if you happen to have both sows and cows are the predominant ones, how an animal that had been gentle all of its life with you suddenly um, has some changes in behavioral pattern and how do you adjust to that. Um, case in point with that, both with mares that have got new foals or uh, cows that have just recently calved, um, that you keep in mind that they tend to be very, very protective of them. We know that and practice that almost always with sows and that's one of the reasons that we often raise them the way we do, but with cattle, um, their desire to protect their young is very, very strong. And so one of the things that we typically do if we have to handle a young calf is we situate ourselves so the calf is between the cow and yourself. Um, cow's really reluctant to try to run over you uh, if she has to get into a calf first. So those kinds of things, common sense approaches to how do we deal with animals uh, to ensure everybody's safety and low stress. Uh, conditions of handling, and this becomes real vital. You can see lots of wrecks in the industry by people that utilize dogs to move livestock, especially when the dogs don't know what they're doing. The animals have to be trained to the dogs as well as the dogs trained to the animals or you end up with a complete wreck on your hands. And so make sure um, that both of those things have been done before you attempt that and that the people that are going to have offered to help you, that you have a pretty good idea of really how well trained their dogs are. Not everybody agrees on um, degrees of training, put it that way. And the last part of this, um, when you take a look at this and you're going to work animals, it's occasionally it's sheep, but almost always cattle uh, are the most likely to get worked on by somebody that's on horseback. We'll reiterate this when we actually see them being moved, but a cow that has never seen a horse before will react entirely different than a cow that her entire life has been moved by humans on foot and vice versa. And so whatever the familiarity is, you, you proceed with caution, go slow, see how the reaction of the animals are. And even within animals of uh, the same species, you get different reactions, not just between breeds within a species, but individuals within a breed. And you always have to be conscientious of that. But the last part is probably a basic lesson in the anatomy and how different animals are. Um, cows, just because of their massive size, kind of have the ability um, to hurt you from either end. Commonly, you're more likely to get kicked by a cow and more likely to get run over by a bull, but either one can, can happen in that regard. And so it's important to remember that animals typically will inflict injury on people for two reasons. One, they're scared, or two, they're aggressive. And uh, there's probably more injuries that occur because of fear out of the animals and improper handling by the people than actually aggressive behavior, but that also does occur and uh, both within males and females, and so you need to keep, keep an idea on that. But the last part that we have right here is when we talk about the anatomy and how different they are from people. Animals which typically have evolved as prey animals have great peripheral vision. They've got a scope of vision much wider than people do. We typically differentiate to about 180 degrees, and, and that's about average. If you look at some dogs that have evolved as predatory animals, their peripheral vision is much more limited than that. Their eyes are located very much on the front portion of their heads. Okay? And, and that evolution process has made them successful or failures as hunters. But prey animals typically get great peripheral vision, 
but sometimes their vision dead on isn't very good. Eye sockets located very much on the sides of their head. Because of that, they don't have what we call binocular vision, meaning their eyesight does not cross over, and so oftentimes they will have a relative blind spot dead on in front of them. That's always important to remember when you talk about animals and you're standing right in front of them and people tend to occasionally get run over and can't understand why they weren't seen. But the, but the great peripheral vision that cattle, sheep, goats, horses have explains some other things too. Because of that, their depth perception isn't very good. Predatory animals, us, hogs to an extent, dogs have got great um, depth perception because of binocular vision. Almost all animals have greater night vision than humans do. Our depth perception is very acute, but our ability to see in, in relative dark conditions isn't very good. So that's really important. At nighttime, the animals probably see you better than you can see them. So it's always really important in your procedures and in safe handling that you utilize those things. After this, we'll go out in the field and hopefully we'll give you adequate demonstration on conditions that you may encounter and hopefully it'll be a good learning experience. Thank you.